The GOP has promised sweeping health care cuts in its efforts to repeal and replace Obamacare. One area where the party claims to protect funding is in the fight against the opioid crisis. The latest draft of the GOP bill includes $45 billion in federal funding to help attack drug addiction. However, a recent CBS News article uncovers that $45 billion might not be enough. Our White House reporter Jacqueline Alamini looked into the ways in which the Trump administration has fallen short in helping those suffering from the crisis just a few miles away from the White House in Baltimore. And she joins us now from the White House North Lawn to talk about her findings. Uh, Jackie, what is the situation in Baltimore? Hey, Tony, thanks for having me on to talk about this. Uh, the situation in Baltimore is like where it is in large swaths of the country, actually, where you recently were, like in Middleton, Ohio, pretty dire. Two people in Baltimore die of an overdose from opioids every day, whether that's heroin, fentanyl, or carfentanil. Um, I just made a trip to Baltimore City, where I went and visited a needle exchange van being run by the Baltimore City Health Department uh, and Dr. Leanna Wen, the Baltimore City Health Commissioner. Uh, and the exchange van, uh, the needle exchange van, is targeting high risk areas of the city, traveling there to accommodate people who are suffering from uh, opiate addiction. They're providing people with harm reduction kits, so that's clean syringes, clean cookers to sort of eliminate the um, risk of using dirty syringes and contracting things like HIV. Uh, and then they're also offering treatment for people who come in and are you know, have, have been to treatment potentially multiple times, but are tired and want help uh, and don't quite know where to access that help. So these people on the van from the Baltimore City Health Department are signing them up for treatment uh, in various locations around the city. And most of those people that I met on the van seeking treatment are covered by Medicaid. Uh, and then they're also uh, administering Narcan. They're providing trainings and they're handing it out to people visiting the van. Uh, seven out of 10 people who they provide Narcan with are actually saving lives, the uh, health department tells me. But much like the situation in Middleton, there's not even enough Narcan to go around for all the people who, uh, who want it. The president has repeatedly touted his, committed, uh, his commitment to stopping the opioid crisis, and $45 billion is apparently headed uh, in the direction of treatment. Is that going to be enough to help a city like Baltimore? No. So President Trump has around the country in places like Ohio, New Hampshire, Maryland, places hit hard by the crisis, touted that this would be a priority for the administration to resolve uh, the crisis. But to people paying close, close attention and being affected around the country right now, this is starting to feel more and more like a talking point. The administration has taken a series of actions that undermine this commitment. Uh, firstly, the Trump White House has just rubber stamped a piece of legislation, the new GOP health care bill, that would slash coverage in the midst of the largest and deadliest public health crisis in American history. Uh, the president has created an opioid commission through an executive order. It's being chaired by Governor Chris Christie. But CBS News broke the story last week that for the second time, the commission is missing a deadline. Their mm. task was to uh, create this report that would put together the best responses to the crisis uh, for the federal government. They were supposed to file an interim report at the end of June. They postponed that deadline. Uh, and then they were supposed to file a report actually today. They, again, missed this deadline. The final report is due in October. But people like Dr. Wen, who were on the front lines in Baltimore City, are calling this report duplicative and an exercise in feet dragging. You know, why is it the administration spending so much time working on something that they already know the answer to? The Surgeon General's office uh, actually filed a report in November of 2016 that was exhaustive on best practices to combating the crisis. So people are wondering, you know, why are we working on another report? Why aren't we acting? Why aren't we saving lives? It, it does uh, perplex one to consider studying a problem as long and well known as drug addiction. Um, so 45 billion, that's not enough with expected Medicare cuts. But so if you had a magic wand or if the people who you spoke to in Baltimore had a magic wand, what would they like to see done? Well, primarily what would they, they would like to see done is uh, get a, the $190 billion that experts are proposing is needed to resolve this health crisis. Uh, but, but, you know, more immediately, 
um, the Senate health care bill that is being proposed right now. They are terrified of this bill being passed and repealing and replacing Obamacare. I spoke with Kellyanne Conway in her office last Wednesday. Uh, she's working on the administration's response to the crisis. And she argued that this bill adds $71 billion in Medicaid, repeating this administration's talking point that cutting future increases in Medicaid does not constitute as a cut. But it does, because cutting $700 billion 10 years down the line increases to Medicaid doesn't add, doesn't equal $70 billion that will, you know, that is supposed to cover the people who are getting kicked off of Medicaid. So, you know, the people on the van in Baltimore City who are relying on Obamacare to cover the treatment that they need um, are really worried about this bill. And how can this administration be advocating for more treatment, which is what Kellyanne was telling me, when they're she, about to cut coverage for treatment? She also said, uh, yes, more money is required. However, this also requires heart, which struck me as the kind of line that the football coach says to the impoverished team after uh, declaring that no pads or helmets will be available this season. What did she mean by more heart? You know, I can't tell you exactly what she meant, but she repeated a line very similar to this on ABC a few weeks ago, where she said, obviously, the epidemic requires funding, but it also requires will. Uh, Senator Ed Markey asked Conway to apologize for these remarks, calling it a death sentence. That language like this undermines the response to uh, addiction. Um, you know, it's an unscientific response. What I hear doctors keep telling me is that you know, would you ask someone uh, who has cancer, who has diabetes, to have more heart to combat what they're suffering from? No. What it requires is actually more insulin to take care of their diabetes. And that's how this administration should be approaching addiction. Yeah, you know, and, until we reach a moment in this country where you have a drug problem, you go to your doctor, and then your doctor says, I'm glad you came. Here's a course of treatment step by step. Until the reaction is comparable to what would happen if you uh, had a physical ailment, a broken leg, uh, we're going to set it, you're going to be in a cast, and then you're going to go to uh, physical rehabilitation. Until it's that clear, I think there are always going to be gaps in the system. And that's a conclusion I've come to ha having done years and years of reporting on the issue now. The, the, the way that the uh, addiction medicine field is adjacent to traditional medicine as opposed to part of it, that is a major exactly. stumbling block to treatment. And I'm not sure if anything that any politician is, is discussing would solve that problem. Yeah, I mean, it's really hard to predict what this administration will do going forward. But one thing that we do know is that when there is enough negative press, for example, we also broke the story that uh, the White House was planning on eliminating the Office of National Drug Control and Policy, which coordinates the federal responses to drug crises. The drugs are our office, yeah. Exactly. Uh, and when there was, they were going to cut the office by 95 percent. And... Uh, when there was enough blowback, they pulled back and the budget came out and they didn't cut the office. Conway tells me that this report will not dismantle the office. Um, but I, I would just lastly say exactly what you said. People on the front lines of this epidemic view it as a treatment issue and, and not as a law enforcement issue or a political one. All right. Well, maintain your will and keep up your heart. CBS News White House reporter Jackie Alamany, thank you very much. Thanks, Tony.